Now Habersham is proud to sponsor interviews with the candidates for the May 24th political primaries. We hope by viewing these personal interviews, you'll get to know the candidates who will be making decisions that impact your life, your family, and your livelihood here at the local and state level in Georgia. We hope you'll vote May 24th, and we hope you'll be more informed in that process by hearing from the candidates themselves in these one-on-one -on -one interviews sponsored by Now Habersham. Hi, this is Now Habersham, and today we're visiting with George Christian, candidate and incumbent uh, for district attorney in Habersham County. Welcome, George, to Thank Now you. Habersham. Thank you for having me. Well, let's start off with, uh, you've been in this position already, but some people may not know you that well. Let's talk about your formal education to prepare yourself as a direct district attorney. Uh, what about the, the, um, the education part of that side? Certainly. Um, once I finished uh, the United States Navy, I graduated from the University of Georgia with a bachelor's in political science. Then I went to Mercer Law School and graduated from there and then started my career as a career prosecutor here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the other side of that uh, experience or education is the experience you've had along the way, careers, uh, uh, opportunities you've had, or things you've learned outside of, say, a classroom. What have you learned about those things uh, that have prepared you to be the DA? Well, first of all, uh, out of law school, I went to work in Houston County as an assistant district attorney. There I tried a lot of cases, murder cases, child molestation cases, everything in between. When I left there, I was chief of the, uh, the district attorney's office. And I went, uh, worked there for about eight years, and I went to the U.S. attorney's office in Macon. In the middle district of Georgia, we prosecuted federal crimes in 70 counties. And there, I uh, prosecuted primarily white-collar crimes. Uh, had a lot of trial experience doing that as well. And when I left there, I was chief of the criminal division, which meant I oversaw the federal criminal prosecutions in 70 counties. I supervised 15 or 17 assistant United States attorneys, support staff. And so um, I was involved in management at that point, leadership, uh, mentoring of lawyers. And so once I left that office, I came up here, started working for Brian Rickman, who was district attorney there. Uh, worked for him for about four years and was chief assistant district attorney when Brian was appointed to the Georgia Court of Appeals. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the average citizen uh, may not know uh, intricately some of the challenges of the DA's office uh, in Habersham County or some of the problems uh, or even goals we might have for the future. So could you speak a little bit to anything you think we might need to change or goals you have in that role? Certainly. Well, of course, it's not just Habersham County. We, we're in the Mountain Judicial right. Circuit, so right. it's Rapin, Rapin, no problem. Rapin County, Habersham County, and Stevens County. We have three staffed offices, so each one of them is a little different, but the goal is the same, and that is to prosecute folks uh, in an orderly, judicial uh, fashion. Um, as far as goals and things of that nature, we still have one opening in, in Rayburn County. Maggie Hastings was the assistant district attorney up there. She went to work for Brian in the Georgia Court of Appeals as a staff attorney, so we need to replace her. And then we'll be at full uh, speed as far as uh, personnel goes. Uh, a couple of things I'd like to do is try to expand the drug courts uh, that we have here in the Mountain Judicial Circuit. Uh, part of that will depend upon resource availability. One of the things we're looking at is expanding the drug courts to incorporate more of a mental health court as well, because what we found is so many of our folks are in uh, drug courts for uh, abuse type problems, substance abuse type problems, also bring in a lot of baggage, so to speak, because of prior abuse uh, as children, things of that nature. So there's a mental health component to that that we'd like to improve upon. Uh, so that's one of the things I'd like to see done uh, to, to change uh, the office. Let me ask you a question, George. There's been a lot of discussion all over the United States today and even in the uh, political races, you know, way beyond the Mountain District and even the state of Georgia. Uh, about crowding of the jails and uh, the sentencing of not drug uh, traffickers or people who sell drugs, but the, the people who are, are caught with small amounts of drugs. Um, 
And there's been a move in a lot of states, even in our state, to try to reduce the prison population and try to redirect these people with education of some kind, rehabilitation. What are you, you see these people on a day in and day out basis. How do you, what do you think about this and maybe speak to that? Certainly. Well, coming out of Atlanta, as you just alluded to, is the criminal justice reform acts that we're, we're seeing each year. And the goal is uh, only to incarcerate in the state prisons dangerous people, people who we, we're afraid of, not people we're mad at or disappointed in. And so uh, in our circuit, as in most circuits around the state, uh, people who are using drugs, uh, people who are committing property crimes to commit drugs, are the bulk of the cases that go through our, our court system. And so uh, the best way to address those is not by sending them to prison because they don't come out rehabilitated or cured of their addiction, but is to try to have the accountability type courts where they learn to deal with their addiction, come off their addiction. And the best thing about that is not only are you stopping addiction in that one individual, you're stopping a cycle of generational addiction and every, all the fallout that comes from living in a house in which there's addiction. Uh, typically children of addicted parents are going to become addicts themselves or they're going to commit crimes themselves. And so if we can break that cycle, then that's the most cost-effective way to address that issue in the criminal justice system. All good ideas have a price tag. <laughs> There's probably no one, there are very few people who would disagree with, with this whole idea. Uh, but how do we pay to rehabilitate uh, people with drug addiction where does that money come from and where do we create the programs to make it happen? And I realize they're private programs, but some of those programs are tens of thousands of dollars for just one run uh, through it. So where does, where, let's take a family who has a serious, uh, uh, the parents have a serious drug problem and they have no money. What do we, what do? We do? Well, th that's a great question because there's no great answer to that. Um, we have a case now in Rabin County where we're trying to find a private facility will take, who will take someone directly from jail into their facility and allow that person to start working at some point in time to pay for the cost of that facility. Okay. Now there's some of those, but then there are the really expensive ones that you're, you're talking about. And the success of them depends upon not only their program, and you need a, an evidence-based treatment program. It can be either with a religious background or not, but in any event, uh, you, you need a good structured program in order to, to reach the, the people who are there to be uh, treated for their addiction. But the other kind of side of the coin to that is people generally are not going to readily accept and take on uh, treatment until they're ready for it. We use the term, and you've heard the term I'm sure used before, until they hit bottom. And sometimes when you force somebody into treatment early on, uh, when they're not ready for it, you're just hitting your head against the wall. Uh, in terms of cost and where that comes from, the governor has been really good about putting taxpayer money into the accountability courts and helping to expand those. One of the things they're doing in conjunction with that is keeping track of the success. Uh, nationally, what we understand is that the repeat offenders are less who go through accountability courts than if you put them in prison. So the whole idea is it's cheaper to go through accountability courts, things of that nature, than it would be to send people to prison. Uh, I think it'll be five or six years down the road before we'll have any good uh, s statistics from the state of Georgia, but we're hopeful that they'll mimic what we found nationwide, and that is that accountability courts work and they're cost efficient. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you work closely, you have worked closely and would work closely with the Sheriff's Office, uh, the law enforcement of our county, uh, and that election is also being held right now, and you were at the event the other night. Uh, so what kinds of things, general things, would a good district attorney look for in a good sheriff? In other words, what, what do you, you have to work closely with the chief law enforcement officer of the county. What do you look for? What kind of personal qualities are important? Well, I've been and doing... I'm not asking you to speak to no, any candidate. Certainly, certainly. <laughs> Just generally, what, what do you certainly, need? What, it, what makes your job better? 
as a former ADA in Houston County, as a federal, as a former federal prosecutor, and also as a prosecutor here, um, what we look for is integrity. That's important. Uh, if you have integrity, I think everything else will come into play. Uh, all the all the folks are competent. Anybody can learn a job, um, but you need that integrity, that strong moral foundation at the bottom. Uh, of course, training, education helps, but experience is, is, is important as well. But you have to have integrity and honesty and openness at the foundation, and everything else will come to fruition on its own, I believe. Mm -hmm. I have a real poignant question for you, George. We don't really know each other. We've uh, met a couple of days, and I've listened to you speak, and I've gotten to know you a little bit better. So I have a, a really, I have a personal question for certainly. you. Certainly. Um, I get the feeling that if you were a full-time practicing attorney, you, you, would, you would be very successful. And I guess you have been also as well. But as the DA, uh, you know, you have a salary and you, you have the job. Why, are you, why do you seek a job like this? Well, I've been in public service my whole life. Mm -hmm. uh, after I got out of the Navy, I was an ADA, uh, Assistant United States Attorney, and then I worked for Brian for about four years. And I love the work. Mm -hmm. I feel like we help people. Um, you know, as, as an ADA and or as a district attorney, you're closer to people than you are when you're a federal prosecutor. It's a completely different ball game. Some similarities, but different. But as a state prosecutor, you, you can really have an impact on individual lives and help them. And you have the sense of being part of the community and helping people, and that's what I enjoy doing. That's just what I feel like I'm here for. As an incumbent, you've already fulfilled this job, and you're looking to do it again. Uh, how, so speaking for the future, how will Habersh how will the Mountain District uh, uh, be better uh, uh, with you in that position? Well, that question in and of itself suggests perhaps that. Um, any former regime wasn't the best, <laughs> and I certainly wouldn't want to. I know uh, Brian Rittman did a wonderful mm -hmm. job. He he created so much goodwill uh, in the communities mm -hmm. that that we serve. Um, I believe that my background um, from the experience of prosecution, mentoring young lawyers, uh, being involved in people's lives, uh, being very close to victims for my 30 plus years of prosecution, uh, my love of people will lend itself to creating a, a very good district attorney's office. Uh, we have a great staff. I think of them as a family. Uh, I want to build the, the trust and love you know, in that family and then spread it among the law enforcement agencies uh, here, not only in Habersham, but Raven and Stevens, and then, ask, and then expand that to the community as well. We've been visiting with George Christian, incumbent uh, for the Mountain District uh, District Attorney, and George, we wish you best Thank of luck. You. Thank you. This is now Habersham, and today we're speaking with Bruce Russell, a candidate for District Attorney of Habersham County. Bruce, welcome to our program. Thank you for having me. Well, let's start off with your formal education, uh, sure. schoolwork. Let's uh, tell us about the things that uh, have an impact on you as a district attorney from a formal education standpoint. Well, from a formal education standpoint, I, I grew up in Raven County and went to Raven County High School. After Raven County High School, I went to uh, the University of Colorado and I have degrees in political science and economics from uh, the University of Colorado. Um, I went on to the uh, went into the United States Navy after after college, and I uh, spent six years in the Navy. Um, I started out in the Navy as a military policeman, and then later on when I went to sea, um, I was a security team leader for a security detail for a uh, search and seizure team. Uh, so that's uh, also quite a bit of law enforcement experience there, um, enforcing the law on the high seas. Um, after I got out of the Navy, I went to uh, Mercer Law School in uh, Macon, Georgia, and I uh, graduated from, from Mercer uh, with, a, with a law degree and a certificate in, in, in legal writing from the, the writing program there at Mercer. Let's talk a little bit about informal education and experiences or job work that are related to your job, uh, would be related to your job as a district attorney. What can you tell us about those things in preparing you for that job? Right. Well, I've done uh, 
I've been a criminal defense attorney um, in Raven County, Habersham, and Stevens. I've also done some work um, in uh, DeKalb and DeKalb counties as well. Um, I think the uh, the role as a as a defense attorney is very similar to the role as a as a district attorney, and I feel like just my experience in the criminal justice system, uh, representing clients, uh, has prepared me well to step into the role of district attorney, even though it is kind of. Uh, switching sides, so to speak, um, it's, it's, not a, uh, it's not a big leap to go from the defense side to the prosecution side. What would you say are some of the challenges uh, facing the DA, DA's office here in Habersham County? I think the biggest challenge for any district attorney is going to be the managing the caseload. And uh, those, those caseloads, they, they grow larger and larger every day. And uh, we just have to attack those, that caseload with uh, you know, leadership at the top and trying to make sure that, uh, that all of the staff, all the other uh, prosecutors um, have the resources that they need in order to uh, go forward and, and you know, keep that, that caseload from, from overwhelming them. I know you, you know this as just being an attorney, but also in the media. All over the country, there's been a move in the past couple of years to uh, sort of stop the flow of nonviolent drug offending uh, guilty citizens uh, into the state prison system uh, and to in fact uh, find a way to rehabilitate them seriously uh, and not just a short program but to, to get them back into our society off, off drugs because it impacts their family particularly if they're a parent. Um, how do you feel about that uh, and, and particularly what about the funding of it? You know how what should we do as the DA to think about not sending quite so many people who don't sell narcotics, but who are using them and get, being caught with them. Right. Well, to answer your, 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 the first part of your question, mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the past, it, it has sort of just been a, um, you know, a, a very cursory uh, type program, you know, basically just you know, sending these folks off to jail for a few months and hoping that when they come back, they're going to be clean. Sort of the, the whole um, idea of if we put them in jail, they won't be using there and they'll be dried out when they come mm -hmm. out. Um, we've seen that that's not been a, a very successful way of doing things. Mm -hmm. I think that um, the, uh, the drug courts and the funding that, that we've got from the state and, uh, and also from, from the uh, local agencies um, to put in a serious program that uh, you know, puts rehabilitation um, at the forefront. And, and when I mean real rehabilitation, I don't just mean therapy. I mean some sort of supervision, encouragement, um, you know, requiring them to get a job and putting them out into the workforce and back into their communities while uh, going through this process of rehabilitation, you know, makes us all have, have a stake in, in, their, in their sobriety. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is, is what has led to a lot of success in those drug court programs and trying to keep folks out of jail. Bruce, uh, as the DA, you would work most closely with the sheriff, or, or very closely with the sheriff as well as others. Absolutely. Uh, and we, of course, we have a, an election going on, and you saw that the debate the other night here in our county. So uh, tell me, uh, aside from these particular candidates, what would you, as the DA, look for in a good sheriff uh, in your relationship with that person? Well, the district attorney is one of his duties that's uh, uh, you know, enumerated by law. He has a duty to, uh, to advise the police on warrants and searches and, and, and how to follow the law, the, the correct way to investigate, investigate crime. And I think uh, the, uh, any, any good sheriff is going to want to uh, utilize the DA's office um, you know, to, you know, as, as most effectively as he possibly can. Now, from a DA standpoint, uh, the way that I look at that is that uh, you know, I will make myself available to, to the sheriff, to you know, any, of, any of the deputies, the chiefs of any of, the, of all the municipalities, uh, let them know that, that we're here and ready to uh, you know to conduct training, to uh, to review case files, to review their procedures if that's what they feel is the is the best way to go about it. Mm -hmm. You bring up a great topic, the seven um, municipalities in Habersham County, particularly. So, uh, what what would you foresee that in terms of the DA's office and working together with law enforcement in those counties? So, do you see, uh, what would be your outlook about that? Well, I've actually talked with quite a few officers when I've been out there on the campaign trail. And um, they, you know, wholeheartedly are very supportive of the DA's office, uh, you know, trying to not necessarily come in and, and, and dictate a whole lot of policy, but, but to come in and, and make some suggestions about, about um, you know, how, how we get case files from the police departments and all the municipalities up to the DA's office 
um, with the, the proper um, you know, paperwork and make sure that, that all of the procedures have been followed so that when we do get those cases in the district attorney's office, then they're, they're easier to, to handle. Mm-hmm. And that, that's that's and that's better for the police officers too because it, it reduces their workload for those cases on the on the back end. Mm-hmm. A couple of quick questions: Are you a registered voter? I am a registered voter. <laughs> okay, I came here 27 years ago from Texas, where there are very straight lines about your job as a public servant, and that mm-hmm. you can't have other businesses that might profit from your role that you're elected to. And right. in Georgia, there seem to be a lot of uh, people under the gold dome who. <laughs> own businesses or represent other people in businesses and they make decisions mm-hmm. that impact that and maybe financial ones as well. Right. So do you own a business that you would uh, grow financially from that was somehow related to the DA's office? No, and in fact, uh, I would, it would be the opposite. Uh, I, would, I have a private law practice um, that I practice law in Raven County and it, it's based in Raven County, but I practice here in Habersham. You know, I would, I would have to, to close that practice. I would no longer be able to take uh, private uh, clients and um, it actually is part of the oath uh, that a district, district attorney takes that, uh, that they will accept no other compensation than what's provided by the state. Mm-hmm. And you would follow that up? Absolutely. Okay. How will the DA's office in Habersham County be different uh, with uh, Bruce Russell leading it? Well, it's, uh, it's going to be a very open and uh, you know, very transparent office. Um, I'm going to uh, make sure that, that the DA's office is out there in the community. Uh, when there are, are issues that, that citizens are concerned about, then uh, we're going to be at the forefront answering those, those, those questions and trying to, trying to solve those problems. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really feel like it's one of the duties of the district attorney's office to, to you know, participate in a lot of community outreach, uh, especially with a lot of the organizations in our community, not just in Habersham County, but in Rabin and Stevens as well, that uh, you know, fight domestic violence and child abuse. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm very, very familiar with those organizations. Mm-hmm. A lot of them utilize private attorneys, and I've had the, the good fortune of, of, of uh, being able to work with those organizations uh, as an attorney and also as a supporter. So uh, as far as the district attorney's office uh, underneath Bruce Russell, it'll be one that's very open and very, very has a lot of community outreach. Mm-hmm. One final question for you, Bruce. Sure. Um, and this was brought up the other night as well, but it mm-hmm. wasn't in your, uh, in, when you were up there, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, what do you, what's your thought about um, um, attorneys uh, and others following the law and knowing, and if you know, have evidence that they have not, or law enforcement officials, what is your thought about uh, being responsible to um, correct that situation? And let's talk about the no-knock uh, warrants. Okay. That's a big issue in this county. Mm-hmm. It costs uh, millions of dollars to settle, and a child was injured, you know, trying to find a drug user. So right. um, how, how do you feel about that as a DA in our county? You, you were there and you realized that, it was pretty much sentiment that no knock warrants, unless in an extreme case, I think everybody, mm-hmm. well, actually two of the candidates said not at all. Uh, one, one has changed their opinion a little bit. Uh, no knock warrants are, uh, you know, are that, that's, a, that's a serious um, you know, situation when a, warrant, when a no knock warrant is called for. Um, and from my own personal opinion, um, I, I, I don't believe that, that no knock warrants should be used uh, you know, very frequently. Mm-hmm. I think that um, I, w- I, w- I wouldn't say that, uh, that that we would never have to use them because you can't, you know, none of us have a crystal ball and none of us can see into the future and see exactly what circumstances might prevent themselves. But as far as a standard procedure within the DA's office, I would definitely uh, discourage the use of, of no-knock warrants um, in, you know, in this part of the part of the state. We've been visiting with Bruce Russell, a candidate for the district attorney, attorney in Habersham County. Bruce, good luck to you. Thank you. We hope you've benefited from these interviews sponsored by Now Habersham. And we want to remind you, be sure to vote May 24th.